you're serious. Oh, yeah, I see. But I, I would also be surprised if we're able to get to them. I would be surprised if we don't always have questions in the room. Uh, Purdue will be here momentarily. Just as a reminder, uh, please silence your cell phones. Uh, provide your name and your affiliation each time you ask a question during the press conferences, and we hold your hand up and we'll get a mic to you. If you are joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function. We will address questions in the room first, and time permitting, we will take Zoom questions and recording of the press conferences on cell phones and cameras is not is prohibited. And Purdue will be here momentarily. And we are allotted about 12 minutes for uh, the winning team. Nice hat, by the way. Nice hat. Congratulations. Appreciate you. Hi, Coach. Okay, Purdue has joined us, and uh, Matt will ask you to make an opening statement, and then we'll take questions for anybody up here on the dais. So, Coach Painter? Yeah, uh, congratulations to Grambling for having a great year. Um, really put us in some binds in the first half. I thought with their playmaking and their, I thought our ball screen defense had to make some improvements in the second half, but just a, a well-coached team. You know, obviously it's hard to, you know, play a game on, you know, Wednesday and then turn around and play a game on Friday. Um, but I just have a lot of respect for what they were doing, just their organization and the stuff they run and what they do. And, but I thought our guys were really good in the second half defensively. We did some good things. Stayed into the ball better. Zach got some blocks, um, dominated the glass. He had 21 rebounds and they had 23, so it's a pretty big stat line for him. And it really wanted to get him established. And, you know, Braden really helped us to start the game, making those three threes and uh, obviously having 10 assists and no turnovers. Um, 
is a pretty good stat line for him. But um, it was just good for us to kind of get, you know, kind of the jitters out, some little bit of experience of playing. We had, I think we have three guys that that was our first NCAA game. Yep. Miles, Miles uh, Lance, and Cam. So I think it was really good for those guys. I thought they did a, a good job for us. But just excited, obviously, no matter who we play in the next game, it's going to be a really good opponent that we're going to have to play well to beat. So just you know, looking forward to watching this game and, and getting ready for the second round. Questions, please. Raise your hand right here in front. Hey, this is for Zach. Hey, Zach, after the way you saw Grambling defeated Montana State by attacking their bigs, was there something you were expecting offensively out of Grambling when you, during the first half to open things up? Yeah, we knew they had some bigs that like to uh, like the post up. Jalen Johnson like the post up. You saw him trying to um, trying to get some make some shots. Um, we kind of knew that their game plan might have been try to get in foul trouble. I was doing my best to try to stay legal, keep my hands up, um, and stay out of those those predicaments that they're trying to put me in. Please state your name and affiliation, please, before you ask your questions. Go ahead. It's Kyle with Sports Report Media. Uh, Zach, talk about that guy to your left, about how he just makes this team go. I mean, 10 assists, no turnover. That's a like that's an insane stat. I don't think people realize that. Um, I don't, people don't realize how much that helps the team. Um, he's under control all the time. He's ready. Like he, we ask him to do a lot, and he he steps up and de delivers every time. Braden Smith is the man on the left for the transcriptionist. Matt, Steve Strimming, XL Sports, uh, right here in the front, brother. Um, I thought you did a great job of attacking Grambling in the middle uh, from the start. And I, I think you did, wanted to dictate the game that way, correct? And then talk a little bit about Kaufman Wren and uh, the job Heidi did. Yeah, I, I thought Cam gave us some, some really good minutes on both ends. You know, used his athleticism, got out on the break. Braden made that one pass uh, to him for a lot, but I thought he did some good things. <laughs> Um, defensively, you know, more than anything. Um, you know, I didn't think Trey had a very good uh, first half. I thought he was, you know, touching and hitting a lot of basketballs, but not getting them. And I thought in the second half, he was just more sure of himself and just played the game and, you know, strong and, and, and got rebounds and really helped us, really, really helped us get, you know, get off to that start. And he's a threat down there. We need him to be a threat on the block, especially when they're giving so much attention to, to Zach. Right here. Um, Coach Justin Abershow with the uh, sports journal, sports capital journalism. Um, you guys were super, um, you guys were super aggressive in the second half defensively. I mean, how does that build confidence for you guys going into the rest of the tournament? Yeah, we, we just, we, I didn't think our attention to detail was great in the first half. You know, they they got away from us a little bit, got some space. We wanted to keep them off the side to kind of open up. We wanted to try to box them in as much as possible. They were doing a good job when we did that of getting that separation. In the second half, I thought we did a much better job with that. And, um, you know, for us, we, we play a lot of position defense and we're trying to keep the ball out of the paint. But if you're going to play position defense, you've got to keep the ball out of the paint because it, that, that's the whole purpose of it. And our, our guys did a really good job in that second half. But, um, you know, if we can't get stops, we can't run. And right as we had that start of the second half where we got stops, eight out of nine possessions, it really allowed us to push the basketball and then be able to flow into motion if we didn't get something in transition. Right here. Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Meet Radio. Braden, you started the game very hot. You had three three-pointers in the first eight minutes of the game. And then with 12 minutes to go in the second half, I sent out a, a tweet that you hadn't scored since, and you immediately scored right after that, of course. Uh, but did you consciously switch into the assist mode instead of the scoring mode? Um, I just think I had some threes there in the second half, and they didn't fall. I think I, I mean, I was like 0 for 6 right there in the second half. So I think just trying to get the other guys the ball, and I mean, we pushed it in transition. We had probably six or seven possessions in a row where we just <laughs> kept going. So I found Cam on a couple of them, just shooters running. So being able to kind of have that um, kind of makes it easier for me, and I just try to get them the ball. Right here. Hey, uh, Greg Doyle from the Indy Star. I, I got one for each of you, Braden, you first, and then Zach. Uh, Braden, you were just pounding the ball to Zach early on and all game long, but they were singling him. Is that kind of, I mean, that's obviously the, the method, right? If they're singling Zach, you're just going to throw it to him until they stop? For sure. I mean, personally, I, I, I'd send two or three guys. but um, So we just try to get him the ball, and then he, he makes really good decisions, whether that's him scoring or him kicking it out to us, and we'll make the play. So. Zach, what, what, 30 and 20, something like that, 31, 21, whatever you did tonight, um, to do it on this stage. 
you know, you've done a lot of things, but 30-20 is pretty rare anywhere but here. Can you just expound maybe on you look at the box score? What do you think when you see those numbers? Um, I mean, you say it's like a big stage, but it's just basketball at the end of the day. Um, I kind of came out trying to set the tone, trying to play as hard as I can, try to send a message to the team, like we're here, we're ready, we're good. Send a message to the country, like we're good. Um, and that, that's kind of how it played out. Yeah. Right, right here. Zach, Ben Baby with ESPN. You know, y'all waited a year to kind of get this moment back to be the one seed again. Uh, what was it like to kind of be able to, to have the kind of win you did and to, to have the performance you did given all of the, the waiting to get back here? We just did what we were supposed to do. I don't think anybody on this team wants any praise for it. Uh, we don't expect any praise for it. We did what we were supposed to do, and we're on to the next game now. Right here in front. Hey, Chris Demersion, uh, KSLA TV out of Shreveport. Hey, Zach, obviously, when you, were you anticipating something Grambling was doing defensively to, in order for you to kind of get in the groove you were able to get into? Yeah, uh, we knew they were a team that doesn't, didn't like the devil. We weren't sure if they were going to try to try to throw in a devil on a two-day scout. Um, they tried to stay, just like to stay one-on-one, -on -one, um, and we, like you saw, we got the ball to me a lot. Right here. Greg Braggs, Boilers in the stands. Matt, uh, Grambling was doing a nice job of hitting that mid-range game. Uh, what goes into making that shot difficult on the other team? Yeah, I, I thought they were getting us a little bit too much space for us in the first half. Um, you know, they don't shoot a high volume of threes, and that's what we wanted. You know, we, we want tough twos. You know, analytically, it just makes sense. If you can stop their layups and their dunks and their rhythm threes, trying to get as many contested tough twos as possible. And um, the, the one thing about it is if, you, if you're staying out of rotations and they're getting tough twos, you've got good rebound balance. So it just trickles into your transition offense. And you just can't get frustrated. Sometimes guys, they'll get frustrated offensively when they take good shots and they miss them and they shouldn't because it's a good shot and they'll make a good number of them. But when guys take tough shots, especially when they're twos and they're from 17 feet that's contested, like you shouldn't get frustrated about it. Just keep doing it, keep making them shoot them but because the, the law of averages is going to say that they're going to miss their fair share. Right here. Uh, right here, uh, Matt. Dylan Sin from the Journal Gazette in Fort Wayne. Uh, Matt, I guess you talked all year about working to get back to this exact spot. How did you think your team handled it now that you got back here? I think they were fine. Um, you know, the hardest thing is just, you know, being asked questions, you know, more than anything. Um, I know you're just doing your job because it happened, but um, for us, you know, we just want to practice and watch film and have a good time and get ready for the games. And um, but it, it, it's part of it, and it's part of going through it. And, and I think anytime you have adversity, um, it can make you stronger. And I think it, it's made us more mentally, you know, tough as a team. And uh, you, but you got to play to your strengths. And the one thing that happens is different opponents are going to try different things. And, and try to keep you away from your strengths. And it's just kind of part of it. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll see here in this next game. But no, just uh, handling, you know, everything throughout the year for us. Like we played one of the best schedules in the country. We played one of the best leagues in the country. So we've been challenged. We've been playing. But this is what we know. This is what we get judged on. But you can't forget to have fun. And you can't forget to go out there and compete and just lay it on the line. Like that's, it, it, like Zach said, it's a basketball game. I go out there and have some fun with it. And we've worked real hard to be here, but, but keep everything in perspective. Right here. Coach, Dave Reinhardt, WCBK Radio. Talking about having fun, Carson, local kid, right. comes in off the bench and uh, even knocks down a three. Some of your thoughts on uh, a special thing like that happening in, the, in a stage yeah, like this? Yeah, you know, it's really hard, especially when you sub in with guys that are all that are cold. And I, I told him, like, you know, don't, you know, don't do anything stupid. You know, when you get out there, because you don't have a guy like Braden who's been out there for two hours running around to help you. You got five guys that are cold, like move the basketball, pass the basketball, you know, get it going a little bit. You know, you try to do too much and you've been sitting there. They, they've been sitting there like you guys have. You know what I mean? Think about if you just got thrown into a game and you had to go do something. So it's a hard thing. But anytime those guys get to play, man, they're, they're, they're great. They, they help us so much in practice. They do a lot of things. Um, but for Carson, obviously being from Lafayette, it's pretty cool. I played with his dad in college and for him to come here and be able to play at Purdue and be able to go there and he'll do anything, you know, to help our program. And so for him to get rewarded and knock down a three in an NCAA tournament game is pretty cool. We've got time for a few more. So right here. Uh, Kyle Nedrip, Indy Star. Uh, Matt, what, uh, you know, as far as Braden's play from last year to this year, what's been his biggest improvement? I think more than anything, not really an improvement as much as just kind of an approach to, to try to score the basketball. Like, we need him to score the basketball. He gets frustrated when he misses. 
Um, he's had some games where he's missed, you know, 10 shots in a game, and like, it just it frustrates the shit out of him. And we're always, you know, we're constantly telling him, you got to shoot the basketball, you got to shoot the basketball. Depends on what people do. If we can get him more in transition, sometimes if people want to hedge high, getting outside of it, or getting people in drops to get to his pull up. So you're going to have more opportunities depending on how, you know, they, they want to defend him and they want to defend us. Um, but just trying to keep him aggressive, I think that's the number one thing more than anything, kind of treating it like high school. Uh, there's a lot of guys you coach you don't want to say that to. Like, don't treat it like high school, right? But, like, for him, you know, that, that, that's part of his superpower is, is, is really trying to be aggressive in those moments. Got time for two more right here. Hey, Matt. Um, Jerry Palm, CBS Sports. Have you had a chance to look ahead at all at Utah State or TCU? And if you have, what are the differences, the main differences between yeah, those two? I have not. I mean, I watched, I watched TCU during the season a couple times just randomly, but I, I wouldn't know. I, I keep it one game at a time. Now, those guys go, if you want to go interview my assistants, they, they, they go ahead and, and watch. But I don't let them talk to me about a game. We, we, we focused on Grambling State. And final question. Matt, down here. Um, for Hammer and Rails, Ryan Bonaparte, Braden and Zach, you've worked incredibly hard to pick your location for this game. How advantageous was it to be in front of this crowd in Indianapolis? Well, it was great, especially when they got into the stands. Like, you know, you're starting a game and people are filing in. Like, it's kind of surreal, right? Like, you know, you would think you start a game and, you know, everyone's going to be there. It's like a major city crowd, right? Like, like going to L.A. to an event or people show up by the fourth inning. But, um, no, it's we, I always say that because, you know, we've had – how many sellouts have we had? Like 72 sellouts in a row, whatever. I don't know the actual number. But I always talk about it. Like, we have great fans, but we've got to give them something to cheer about. And you can, you know, be in Indianapolis, you can have the, all your fans that you want, but if you don't give them something to cheer about, they can't help you. So you got to play the right way, and you got to be tough on defense, and, you know, and, and that's our goal, to go out there, and, and we put ourselves in a good position, but you still got to, you know, do the little things and, and execute and, uh, and help that out. Now you have an advantage when you play the right way and you do things the right Thanks, way. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, fellas. See you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Just a reminder, uh, no recording on cell phones or cameras. And please silence your cell phone. Grambling will be here momentarily. Coach. All right, we are joined by Grambling State and Coach Jackson. If you will just make an opening statement and then we'll open it up to questions for anybody that's up here. So go ahead. Uh, tough game tonight. You know, we can, my, my hat's off to Coach Painter. Uh, 
does a phenomenal job with the Boilermakers. Uh, I knew they would be super ready to play tonight, and I knew they would come out the half and be ready to ready to compete after we kind of kept it close. Uh, man, hats off to Zach Eady, man, just an incredible player. So that was that. That was the difference. Question right here in the front. Hey, uh, Chris Demersion uh, at a KSLA TV in Shreveport. Hey, Coach Dante, what did you tell your team after the game? Obviously, um, an emotional, emotional run for you guys. I uh, just let them know uh, there's nothing that they have to hang their heads about. This has been a, a great season for us. The unfortunate part about this is only going to be one team happy at the end, and that's probably going to be the national champions. And, you know, we hope we just lost to the national champions tonight at the end of the day, but I told them they – this has been a historic year for them. Uh, win the SWAC regular season title, win the SWAC tournament title, win the first four play-in game. You know what I mean? For, for a low to mid-major, that's all you can ask for. You can't ask for much. And then you go play one of the best teams in the country, and you, and you put up a, a, a good fight for about, about 20 minutes. And you know, after that, life kicked in. <laughs> Bob? Yeah, Bob Kravitz with Indy Monthly for Contavious and Tremichael. You ever seen anybody like Zach Eady? I Not. mean, and, and what, how frustrating was it trying to get him under control? Uh, I don't think nobody's seen that like Zach <laughs> Eady. That, that's kind of unreal. What, he, what they say he is on paper, he's exactly that. Uh, that's yeah. Contavious. Go ahead, Jermichael. Yeah, he's a big dude, bro. Uh, it was kind of hard, bro, uh, trying to get them uh, shots off on him. Uh, Right over here. Uh, Coach, Justin Avers show with Sports Capital Journalism. What would you say to other teams that have to play Purdue during this tournament? Uh, I would just tell them uh, they need to figure out how they're going to handle Zach Eady. Uh, and the reality of the situation is I hope you're equipped for it. Uh, we're, we're just not equipped to play. We, we don't see Zach Eady. We don't see anyone as, as physical or as dominant as him. And, you know, the tough part about it is is that when you run two people at him, then he's good enough to kick it out for threes. And it's one of them things that you got to pick your poison. And hopefully you got enough bigs that can kind of battle with him and, and have enough fouls to, to give. And hope he having a bad free throw shoot night. <laughs> right here, Tom. Tom Bruce, Sports Illustrated, Purdue. You guys, uh, it was 31-27 a couple minutes ago and a half. What was running through your mind then? Same thing that'll run through our mind at the beginning of the game. We can do this. <laughs> uh, we know we're going to uh, fight, and uh, we ain't going to never give up. That was Tremichael. Go ahead, Davis. Just a lot of hope, man. A lot of hope, man. We fought as hard as we could. OK, right here. Yeah, Dante, uh, Ben Baby with ESPN. Just from the being in the first four and then being here in this atmosphere in the arena playing a team like Purdue, what was this whole experience like over the last three days? And then I'll follow up with that with another question after that. Uh, the experience has been amazing. Uh, for us, it's the first time that it's the first time in my career that I've been to a Division One NCAA tournament. I've been to Division Two NCAA tournaments, but I haven't been to the Division One NCAA tournament. And to actually get get here and get a win in the first four and in a really, really intense game and make it to the next site. I mean, it's been an amazing run. And like I told our guys, this this is something you can cherish for the rest of your life because this doesn't happen for everybody. Right. And secondly, secondly, also, there's been a lot of conversation about potentially uh, either expansion or potentially replacing some of the low to mid-majors with power conference teams. What would that do for, for teams like yourselves and other low, low conference uh, squads who are automatic qualifiers who maybe get squeezed in a potential scenario such as that? Well, I think that's a tough situation because I think you take the beauty of the NCAA tournament out. I mean, look at last year with, with FDU. You know, you, you, if you replace some of the smaller schools, then you, you kind of lose that Cinderella story. And even with the fact of, I look at the NIT, you replace a lot of the uh, what is it, the turn of the regular season uh, title holders, and then you replace them with teams that don't really have great records or didn't have a great season, and then you even got teams opting out, opting not to play. At the end of the day, reward the guys that work for it and give, give, our, give our student athletes something to look forward to because 
the reality is the big schools get a lot to look forward to. Right here. Hey, Coach. Coach, uh, Chris DeVersion, KSLA TV out of Shreveport. Uh, Y'all were the first team, obviously, northeast Louisiana to make the tournament since uh, ULM did, and they lost to Wake Forest in 96. But having a team finally go to the tournament from north Louisiana, what does it do for high school basketball? What does it do for college basketball throughout the region? Uh, it's just like, you know, for us in northeast Louisiana, it's a good brand of basketball that's being played. Uh, from from us winning a, our regular season title to La Tech having a great year, uh, you know, uh, Northwestern had a, had a solid year, and ULM had a solid year, and I just think that it just it just helps the brand of basketball in the area, and just lets everybody know that you know there's, a, a, there's very competitive basketball going on within our region. Coach Kyle with Sports Report Media. Um, after the play-in game, you were very complimentary towards Purdue and Coach Painter. But looking at Coach Painter and the program that he's built, talk a little bit about that, uh, about Coach Painter and what he's built and kind of emulating and how he's been trying to help so many other schools build up their programs too. Uh, you know, I had a chance, you know, to have a brief conversation with Coach Painter before the game. And, you know, I just told him, Hey, Coach, man, you run some great stuff, and I'm always stealing from you. And then he turns around and tells me, hey, don't worry about it because I'm stealing from somebody else. And, you know, he was like, that's what the best coaches do. And, you know, even walking off, he just said, hey, man, you're a, you're a hell of a coach, man. Keep working at it. Keep doing what you're doing. And, you know, Coach Painter has been you – know, from a couple years ago, I met him at the Florida Clinic, and we were uh, – it's kind of invite-only clinic type deal for coaches at the University of Florida. And, Man, just a just a just an incredible guy, you know. Take you under the wing, give you advice, talk to you about all different type of things. So, I have nothing but the utmost respect for Coach Painter and just the program that he built here at Purdue. It's one of the best programs in the country, one of the top, in my opinion, one of the top ten programs in the country year in and year out. So, you know, Coach Painter is a uh, is one of the guys that you look up to and that you want to emulate. You know, when you're talking about coaching. Right here in the front. Hey, uh, T. Mike, Chris Immersion out of KSLA TV in Shreveport. Hey, being a Shreveport guy, putting the area on a national stage with the many performances you've had in the SWAC championship game and up to this point, what did it mean to put the area and you being responsible for putting the area on the map? Sure, Michael. Uh, it means a lot. No, I know I uh, came out, did my best, and I know I made the city proud. Anything else? We do have a question. Okay, let's go to Zoom, please. Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call, DT.com for the student athletes and for Coach. Just what it's been like to represent Grambling on a national stage and to get that victory that puts you in the game that you're in today and to give you the opportunity to show the world who Grambling is and what you're all about, just what that means to each of you. Contavious, we'll start with you. Um, um, it means a lot, man, especially with these group of guys, you know, uh, we've been through a lot this season with each other, and just to see our hard work pay off, man, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's a one-on-one -on -one feeling. Coach? It means everything for me to represent Grambling to come up here. Uh, it was a dream for me to be here, uh, coach Division One basketball, and this is where my opportunity came, uh, came at. So. Uh, you just want to come out here and do your best for everybody that you represent. And, you know, Grand family has been highly supportive. So just want to come out here and, and showcase our, our basketball and make sure people are proud of us. Anything else? Thank you, Grambling. Thank you. Thanks.